So our end fund balance, given the adopted budget, increased over the years slightly, and um, that's what we ended for um, the adopted budget. So now we change that adopted budget to reflect what the state has done. Um, and the state has adopted the local control funding formula. And so we have now put that into, we are putting that into the budget. So we're moving from the revenue limit, which is in the past now. We won't be doing the revenue limit anymore unless they go back to it, which I seriously doubt that it will ever look like it looked before. So we are on to the local control formula funding for the future, for the current and for the future. Um, additionally, we um, are going to be recognizing uh, $1.2 million for one-time Common Core funding. Now, um, that's actually part of last year's budget. Um, well, it's not part of the budget, but it's uh, from Prop 98 for last year uh, because Prop 98 came in higher than expected, and so the way the governor decided to um, give the money to the school districts was to fund Common Core, which is really wonderful for us. It, we will need these funds, and I'll show you a little bit later um, how we're already using those funds. Um, and then also because a new census data came out, and we're trying to keep up with the federal government and how they um, are awarding us for our, our federal grants. But Title I, we have been reduced in funding by Title I, Title I once again um, by $90,000 um, in addition to what we thought earlier. But that's realigning it with the census data. And so consequently, because we've got these programs in place, um, the general fund will have to support Title I in, for the reduced amount. So that's a reduction in unrestricted revenues for us. Um, but we also have this, um, how, how expenditures have changed in the revised budget. We had $650,000 budgeted for technology expense, expenses to um, support Common Core. Well now, those expenditures can be transferred to follow the restricted Common Core funds that have come in. So those expenditures will be moving out of the unrestricted expenditures and going into restricted and being paid for by the Common Core. So that, that's really good for us. Yeah. Um, and also, because um, we know where the budget is now, we have, we're removing from our fund balance designations, the designation as state adoption reserve. So this part is um, time to put your thinking caps on. This is um, an education now. And the following slides will be a template for you to be able to refer to in the future if you are trying to understand how we're getting our new funding. Because this is completely different, again, from the revenue limit. And I wanted to give you something that you could go from page to page and try to follow it and see how we're getting our funding from year to year in the future. So um, this is the education on the... Um, you have to hear it four times before you understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Local yeah, control really funding said. formula. We but you know what? You have... Oops. You have eight years to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> How great. <laughs> <laughs> and then it should be smooth sailing. Um, so, and, and this is something that you've, uh, we've gone over before too. So where it used to be seven years, now it's eight years. Um, and what we're, fund we're going to be funding over this eight years, or what the state's going to be funding, is what they're calling, what we're calling our gap. Okay, so our gap in funding is equal to the difference between what our local control funding formula target is for 2020-21 and the amount that we got last year under the revenue limit with COLA added to it, the 1.565% COLA, plus um, the categorical programs that are going to be disappearing that, have, that are a part of um, the LCFF. So in other words, last year's monies that would be applicable to the LCFF compared to our target 
you take one, subtract out the other, and that's what we're, we're short funded. And that's the amount that is supposed to be um, funded over the next eight years. Um, so That was the deferred. I'm sorry? That was the deferred payments? No, that has nothing to do with the deferred, get those. the deferrals. <laughs> we um, lost that's those. a completely <laughs> different thing. We still are going to have deferrals. Bottom deferrals are is, being reduced, getting, however. Um, so because uh, Prop 98 was bigger last year, um, they're putting approximately $2 billion more towards the interior deferrals. Mm -hmm. So um, that wall of debt is being reduced, and there is this intent to continue to reduce that wall of debt. Yeah, hopefully. So, and those were funds that we still got. We just kind of got them a little later than we were supposed to get them. The paycheck came late. Um, so for year 13-14, the year that we're now in and the year that we're revising, we are going to be funded 11.78% of the gap. And I, as we move along, you'll see these things coming up over and over again in the little lessons, okay? So um, we will receive that, uh, that portion of the gap this year. Um, in the following years, uh, the, what will be funded of the gap is not known at this time, and it will be determined on a year-to-year -year basis what the state can afford. Oh my gosh. Now that target is going to increase on a yearly basis by the COLA. That is the intent at this time. And of course, they can increase it, they just don't, they don't necessarily have to fund it, right? Oh, well, just a target. Yeah, the target is going to increase, but the funding is, we'll see how that increases. Okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. And that deficit factor is completely gone now. We're not, they're not going to fund the deficit factor. This is instead of the deficit. The, the target is instead of the deficit factor. Okay, so now, <laughs> how do we do this, how do we, how do we actually do this local control funding formula? How do we figure out what our target is? How, how is the funding going to happen? Well, there's the base grant, and the base grant is by grade span now, where we used to get ADA per kid, and it was just a flat amount, didn't matter if they were in kindergarten or eighth grade. Um, now it does. It's going to be K3, 4, 6, 7, 8 for us. And um, we do have the COLA put onto it. And um, the class size reduction that we've been getting, we've been getting um, $1,171 per enrollment in class size reduction if we had no, no penalties at all. That's going to be replaced by $723 per student. So it is a reduction. Um, it's going to be based, it's based on um, class sizes of 24 to 1 maximum, right? And so um, this base grant not only replacing places the, the revenue limit, but many categorical programs and class size reduction. So then after we um, get, and this base grant amount, every district will get. It doesn't matter if you're basic aid, it doesn't matter if you're us or anybody else in the state. This base amount, we're all going to go with that same number. So, I mean, the, the places that already get a bazillion dollars through their property taxes are still going to get that amount? Well, that's the guaranteed amount. You know, I mean, they'll, they'll get more I than... I mean, but they get that in, they addition, won't get that to their in addition to their property taxes. Oh, okay, so, so they're if guaranteed at least that yeah. much. From, okay, good. Yeah, I was just thinking, like, I don't really feel like sharing with Woodside. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, with us. We'll see what happens in the years to come. <laughs> Okay. So once we get our base grant amount, then come on come the add-on grants. The add-on grants, there's two basic ones. There's supplemental grant and concentration grant. And so this is based on what I'm going to call um, enrollment eligibility percent. Okay. And what that is made up of is the unduplicated count. Our districts, unduplicated count or any district, unduplicated count, of their free and reduced students as well as their English learners and their foster youth. So what we mean is an unduplicated count is if a free and reduced student is also an English learner, we don't get to count them twice. We only count them once. So district-wide, we'll have a certain percentage of that. Actually, not really district-wide, but in those grade spans, there'll be a certain percentage of our students that um, will be free and reduced and uh, uh, the unduplicated count. So, in order Excuse to determine, yes. but they're also counted first up above. 
I'm sorry? Are they first counted up above? Well, yes. every student is counted up, up okay. above. Okay, just want to make sure that we didn't take okay. them out. So the, these add-on grants are for these um, eligible, the enrolled eligible students that um, are disadvantaged here. Yeah. Okay. So with the supplemental <coughs> grant, which is going to be our first add-on, we're going to take this, and, and I will show you in other pages, okay, the numbers. Can't wait. We're going to take the base grant amount here, and we're going to say 20% of that base grant amount um, will We'll take the base grant times 20 percent times our percent, our percent of enrollment eligibility students. Okay, that will be, and we'll look at the numbers. <laughs> that will be the add-on for the supplemental grant. Mm -hmm. For the concentration grant, we're going to take that base grant again. We're going to multiply it by 50 percent. Okay, and then we're going to apply the percentage of are enrollment eligibility students that are above 55 percent. So in other words, if you had 60 percent, then only five, per, that would be a five percent number then here. So you have to subtract out that 55 percent from whatever your, your EE percent is. Okay. Oh, wow. uh, <clears throat> we're going to go over that more. <laughs> you don't have to understand it quite yet. So. Um, and then there's a couple other additional add-ons. There's the, the TIG, the Targeted Instruction Improvement Grant, and the Home to School Transportation. And that was a political thing. They're just adding that on. Um, we will continue to get that. Um, there won't be COLA added to that from year to year. It's just basically so that districts don't lose these funds. Um, the TIG funds will be unrestricted, and the Home to School Transportation funds need to be used for Home to School Transportation. But that's not a problem because we have to provide transportation for our special ed students, mm -hmm. and we can use it for that. Are we required to do TIG? I know that we. That's when the students go to another classroom. So oh, what is so this? Same different it's TIG. TIG. It's a homonym. <laughs> it's right, so what is this? You one? don't have to think of it as it's just money now. All right. <laughs> okay. And it's unrestricted. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Okay. So now we get to some numbers. Okay. So. Um, the adjusted base grant, so it's now adjusted for it with the COLA in it and the class size reduction in it. These are the dollar amounts that we and every district will get as a minimum for our students. Uh, for every ADA that we have. Um, why, and why does the seventh and eighth graders get less? I'm sorry, what? How come this um, seventh and eighth grader has a lesser amount? Okay, so good, good question. Um, the reason why the uh, K-6, and this, and everything here should really probably be TK-6, okay? Yeah. But I'll just, so every time I say K-6, it's really TK-6, okay? Um, the reason why TK-6, TK-3, I'm sorry, TK-3, is higher than these two is because it's got that class size reduction adjustment in it. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. That additional $723. Yeah. Yeah, and so then, um, you know, this, uh, four six is lower, but then seven eight goes a little bit higher than the four six, so that's why it's more. Um, so this is the amount that everybody is going to get, and then we get to the supplemental grant, which every like again every district is going to have a different percentage <coughs> of these EE students. Okay, um, and so if you take this, and and what I'll do in this example here and these examples is. These all follow the same thing. So we'll just go with the K-3, because the formula is the same for all the groups. Um, so if you take the $7,675 of the base grant, and you multiply it by 20%, you end up with um, $1,535 per um, EE student, EE percentage of students, okay? so. What's going to happen is then after you get this amount, we're going to multiply it, and you'll see that in the next slide, by the EE percent. Okay, it'll, it's on the next slide. Then we get down to the concentration grant. Again, the concentration grant is now going to take 50% of this amount. 50% is $3,838. Then it's going to be multiplied by the EE percent that is above 50%. Okay. That means it can only be 
45% is the maximum amount, right? Because uh, from 50% to 100%. 45. So see this here? This is if 100% of our students were eligible um, for these additional grants. So in other words, if we had 100%, and I know this seems like, well, we're not there. No district is going to be there. But it is actually important for you to be able to take this template and be able to figure things out yourself if you wanted to in the future. So this is the most possible that any district could get if they had 100% unduplicated count. So um, which means that if you can only have it to, for students, uh, the, the percentage over 55%, that means you can only get a maximum of 45% of that. That's why I've crossed it out. This is what you're going to multiply by, but the biggest multiplier you could have is 45%. So if you have that 45%, you would get 45% of that amount, which would be $1,727 per student. <clears throat> so if we add these three together, one, two, and three, we would end up with the amount of funding you would get per K3 student, TK3. So at this point, all of this is based on enrollment, and then we get pay based on attendance. So that's why I say we move from enrollment to attendance. We determine the dollar amount we're going to get by enrollment, and then we get applied, it gets applied to us by attendance. Okay, so this is the maximum. And this target is to be fully funded. You're going to hear me say this over and over again in 2020 21. So the next slide, we're going to go to oh, Jefferson now. So oh. here we are, and here is our unduplicated eligibility enrollment is 77.4%. Okay. So now we have the numbers. This is approximate based on last year, but it's going to be based on our CBEDS material for this year, uh, which we are not going to have for quite some time. But we're not going to vary that much from last year. So this is target calculation here. Again, these are the exact numbers that you saw on the previous page for our mm -hmm. base grant amount. That's not going to change mm -hmm. this year. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this amount, we're multiplying it by the 20%, and then we take that 20, the amount that we get from that, and we multiply it by 70, 0.774. And so in which case, for our supplemental grant, we get 1,000. $188 per TK through three student. Mm -hmm. We go down to our concentration grant. Again, we take this amount here, we multiply it by 50%, then we multiply it by our EE that's above 55%. So 77.4% minus that 55%, and we end up with 22.4%. So take this, multiply it by 50%, multiply it by 22.4% and we end up with 860 per TK student, <coughs> TK ADA, okay? So we add each of these three together, one, two, three. Our district ends up with $9,723 as a target for 2020-21 um, when we multiply that out by our ADA for the, this grade span. And then, of course, these are the other two grade spans. Next, what does it actually come to? What do the dollars come to for this district? So our base grant um, times our current ADA would be $44.5 million. Our add-on grants, supplemental grant, concentration grant, are almost $7 million and almost $5 million. so nearly $12 million more of restricted money, okay? Mm -hmm. Highly restricted later on. We'll talk a little bit about that. <laughs> and then we get our TIG money, and we get our transportation money, and every year this is going to stay the same. These will change because um, we're going to have uh, COLA added to those, but and also because our... Um, unduplicated count will vary from year to year. But um, these will change, these will stay the same each year. So when we add all this up, this is our target amount 
57 million dollars for 2020-21 if it's all funded by them I just had a horrid thought that I have to ask <laughs> because we actually get paid on the ADA is that going to matter then are we gonna to to be tracking if, if the kid who's absent is a kid who is one of our eligibility kids are we gonna take a bigger hit on that ADA no we're we gonna to have to track that God help no. us <laughs> because what happens is our formula let me go back <laughs> our formula is based on enrollment and then it's we're not going to get this okay, not attendance we wouldn't have to multiply it by the 0.774 if it were per student because right, okay. that student would get a hundred percent and a student that didn't wasn't one of these counts wouldn't get any of this right right okay so, so right, the so. determination is based on yeah. enrollment district-wide and the payment is determined okay, on good. I just had, I just had this horrible thought. Yeah, and I can yeah. see the government doing so that to us. The so the reminder will be when you're really looking at yeah. this is this part right here. That will be your reminder for the future when you're trying to figure it out. Right. Should you try to figure it Barbara, out. I'm not going to try to figure it out. Well, obviously, any absence will then ding us by that, right. that amount that's a per student, that nine, seven, whatever it was. Right. OK, so um, that, here's our target once again. So now we're going to go on to um, what is this year's funding. So now we know what our target is for 2020-21, but what are we gonna get this year? Okay, so here's our target, okay? And then our transitional base funding, our hold harmless, which what I said was last year's revenue limit plus COLA plus uh, class size reduction. I'm repeating myself because I'm trying to just mm -hmm. kind of Test help you to here. remember this. <laughs> Um, so our amount is uh, 36 million dollars. So if you take the 56 million or 57 million and you subtract out the 36 million, we end up with our funding gap that's going to be funded over the next eight years. Except that that's going to change because we're going to get the colons. So. Uh, am I hearing that that 20,000 is going to be stretched over eight years? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, this this amount this the funding gap. Yeah. So yeah. the target won't be funded for eight years supposedly. And the gap oh, oh. is what's going to be funded because we're already getting this from last year, okay? So that's the minimum we're going to get. And they're saying this is our gap, and so it's going to be funded over an eight year period. So we take our, our beginning transition amount, which is the amount that we got last year, our hold harmless amount, we put it here. And remember, I said we're going to get 11.78% of the gap? Mm -hmm. Okay, so 11.78% of this amount is two million four hundred thousand okay now don't get too excited because remember we already put into the budget the deficit mm -hmm. reduction dollar amount kind of pretty much evens itself out we're a little bit ahead but this, it pretty much evens itself out so we did a good job with that um, so but I want what I want to remind you here is that the concentration camp grants <laughs> Yeah, we heard concentration camp. Oh, grants. <laughs> grants. No, it sounded like Concent camp. No. Did you Supplemental did you and concentration that? grants um, make up 21.1% of this total funding. So hmm. you can think of, it, in a way, it makes up 21.1% of any funding that we get. Although, we don't really have to. Well, we'll go into that later. Okay. So um, our budget, we're changing our budget so that this will be the dollar amount that we recognize as receiving from the local <coughs> control funding formula. So this is what it's going to look like now. Um, we had an $82,000 uh, deficit spending, and now we've got a $1.1 million dollar increase and um, I want to that's pretty much that's made up by actually additional net additional revenues of 591,000 and um, a decrease in expenditures of six hundred and forty one thousand dollars right here and six hundred fifty eight thousand dollars of that was from the technology Investment, so we we move that out from here and put it into the uh, the restricted to follow the Common Core funding. 
So as you can see, we're in a better position. Um, not huge better, but better. This year is huge better. And the other years, they're, they're good too. Um, and then we come down to what our end fund balance is going to be. Plus, if you look down here in the designations, I've removed $1.3 million that was designated as uh, the state um, adoption reserve. So it's, it's been moved out of here. Okay, so here is our fund balance, which has that same kind of curve that we had before. It's a little bit better. So this is our balance? That's our, that's our fund balance. No negotiations have been completed. And our, our um, benefits cap is still the same. Okay. So that is, again, without changing anything there. Okay. So um, with the, the, the supplemental and concentration grants, not camps, um, there are those huge compliance issues that we'll be faced with um, and mostly at this point we don't really know just yet exactly what they're going to be but when we're full when it's fully implemented in 2020 21 those dollars are all supposed to follow the students that generate them until then we're supposed to have maintenance of effort for the EIA program and um, we will get more guidance as time goes on which comes down to right here the State Board, of Equal, uh, State Board of Education has a timeline. That timeline is January 1, um, this coming January 1, they'll have the standards and criteria for us. What that is is that that's our accounting ability. Um, so how we account for it. So when you get your first interim report, second interim reports, um, you know, and the, the budget and such, we do um, the standard and criteria as part of it. At that time, they'll be telling us what, for these grants and stuff, what are our, our resource codes that we're going to use? How do we need to account for them? Okay, so they're going to tell us what those numbers are so we know where to put the expenditures, right? Um, at the end of January, they're going to tell us how to spend the money. <laughs> so, um, you know, and hopefully we've done a good job of spending it decently at, in the time being, but um, we will spend it like we've spent the EIA because right now we're holding, we're still doing the EIA program and we need to do it at least like we did it last year at this time. So that's what we're following. Um, Just to clarify, EIA, that's economic impact, A? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, the end of March, um, they'll have what we're calling the, um, the LCAP. So um, it's going to be the local accountability, the, the local control accountability plan template so that we in the future we'll have a plan to how are we going to be spending these funds, what programs are we going to be implementing that are going to support the supplemental and concentration grant, that the supplemental and concentration grant will support. So what are those programs? And so that template will be out this year. And then October 1st, 2015, they'll establish the rubric. How are they going to, how are they going to score us? on um, what, we're, what we've done. So by then they'll be able to tell exactly how well we've done our local control according to exactly the way they want us to do it. Yeah, <laughs> how, exactly. Right. So is it really local control? No. <laughs> so, so we're hoping to get at least some guidance really on January 31st. Um, this is just going to be an accounting thing. Mm -hmm. We're moving every expenditure we've got to different places. But this is where we're going to learn more about how to spend the funds. Are they, are the legislators trying to figure that out or are they waiting for us to go through halfway through the school um, year? I'm going to guess that it's going to be a work in process. As I said to you, you've got eight years to figure, to learn this, so do they. All right. That's so for the, the revised budget, because I've got a couple more slides, but it's not the revised budget portion, um, do we have some questions? that I can help you with. Mm. Would you like a big so. bottle of migraine pills for Christmas? Okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, even though the, the way it's presented in the, in the nutshell, how much money are we going to get more? Are we going to have more? Yeah. Um, about, well, we've got between 
the reduction of expenditures. I don't care how you get it. Just tell me the numbers. And an increase in <laughs> okay, um, about five hundred ninety-one thousand dollars this year. More than what we had last year. More than what we budgeted this well, year. Well, what we budgeted. Okay. But um, over last year, it's greater than that mm -hmm. because um, we recognized COLA mm -hmm. already in our adopted budget, and we also recognized the um, deficit reduction in our in our budget. And the deficit reduction mm -hmm. was like about 4.285 percent, and the COLA was about was 1.565 percent. So you put those together, and we're getting close to a 6% increase right. over last year. That's what was in our adopted budget. Okay. And so now this pushes it up a little bit. So it's probably a little bit around 6% over last year. Okay. That is just off the top of my head right now. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on those numbers. <laughs> I don't have any questions. Just a comment that I'm glad to at least see the um, projections and the years are all positive as opposed to when I first <laughs> came on the board. Zero. <laughs> yeah, zero and then going to negative and then maybe later somewhere down the, the line going up. So that looks... Uh, I also want to say that, you know, this, this big amount of the, this restricted grant amount, this $12 million, it's going to... Um, we're going to be looking at that and thinking how how do we appropriately spend those funds? How do we... Um, structure, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not the person for this. This is where I'm not qualified in instruction, of course. But how do we educate our students where those funds will be able to support that? Right. Figure out how to spend those funds appropriately. Well, now and I of do course, have a question. come January, <laughs> we'll have more guidance on that. All right. That maintenance of effort, that's my question. Like, what is that? Yes. Well, that's what we're already doing. This, all right. I think it's just it's basically spend at least as much as you spent last year all right. on this program. Oh, I see maintenance yeah. of effort. Which, is, right. what, which is what order. is planned in the budget. Five minutes. Anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Done. Any other questions about the the, revi the revised budget? Nope. No. 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 Are we can. So we have it just real quickly. You know, um, I asked Ms. Ms. Uh, Kessler to just real quickly just go over what happens if we increase our district expenditures by we just start off with ten percent. We didn't do this. Right. What happens if this our expenditures is. go up by ten? Just give me one second. Okay. Right. So my next slides are just two slides no, to basically show. Where would the One district minute. be if every if if our expenditures were increased by ten percent? Oh, all right. Just that sounds flat ten percent, not breaking it out anywhere. So, this is how we what we'd look like if we increased expenditures, 2013-14 and the out years, by ten percent. We would have deficit spending of three point five million dollars this year, four million next. Well, so Almost four million the following year. I couldn't tell what that number was, and 3.2 and out here. That would translate in our fund balance to that. So I think the the reason for the slide is a lot of times you sit there and think 10 percent is nothing. What's 10 percent? That's no big deal. But you see what happens with just 10. That's all I did is increase expenditures by 10 percent, mm -hmm. and um, and and that's the effect. And I just wanted to add that on at the end so that it just kind of makes people recognize that things, it's like the penny today, you double it every day for 30 days, and you end up with a lot more money than just a million dollars. It's hard to believe, but it happens. Right, so. um, I'd like to echo on that, on the fact that um, um, we only have two, two minutes. Two minutes Absol right. Absolutely yeah, correct is, is the fact that it, we, we should continue to be frugal and smart with our money. Okay. 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 Right. Thank you. So, do, do we still need this all? Yeah, well, because okay. we have to vote on well, it. We could table everything else that wasn't voted on today. Well, you really? We could certainly do those. Uh, it take a second. Requirements or resignations here. Okay, the goal not not okay, let me do this right now then. Don't we have time? Yeah, we we'll have okay. time. Okay, so number, number four, uh, four, Roman numeral four, number one. I just wanted to be sure when I talked about certificated resignations that there, it wasn't mentioned uh, that shouldn't we be giving Ann Green a, a resolution commending her for her years of service? Yes. Thank you. She's a marvelous teacher. I, I, no, I, know, I, I mean, I didn't make, you know what I meant by saying that. So, okay, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the resignations as submitted and that Ann Green receive 
a letter of uh, a, a accommodation for her years of service. If I could comment, I think you, if you're basing that on 10 years, and I would also think that uh, Jennifer Zippin would receive one also. Yeah, okay. That's a good point. Okay. Then, then we'll do that as well. All right, do we have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay, and the next one we can do very quickly is number five, two, the employment for classified employees. I, what I wanted to make sure is you listed computer technician, okay, then you said Michael Rojas. What job does he have and what job does Alan Wu have? They're both computer technicians. One is full-time and one is part-time. Okay, just want to make sure because it didn't say. <laughs> oh, it didn't repeat it. it in, in the future, it would, I appreciate it so I don't have to ask. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the employment for classified employees and that we note that Michael and Alan are also computer technicians. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And Sorry, I couldn't I'll quite make a motion that we table the board policies discussion to the next okay. agenda. Second. No. Yeah. No? Yes. <laughs> You're not going to be here all night. I heard yeah. a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any comments from any board members? No. No speakers' cards. We will adjourn at 10 o'clock, uh, 9.59 on the dot. <laughs>